guys, welcome back to Airplane Anatomy, a series where I break down different airplanes from their history to their engineering to how they fly. So today in episode 3, we're going to be talking about the biggest plane in the world. And no, it is not the blimp. We're going to be talking about the Antonov AN-225 Maria, which is Ukrainian for dream. However, a more fitting nickname would probably be Beast of the Skies because that's exactly what she is, uh, with six different engines and 32 landing wheels, as well as a max payload capacity of 275 tons, which is almost double that of the Boeing 747. And some of its most famous passengers have included the Soviet space shuttle, four armored tanks, as well as countless medical supplies throughout COVID-19. However, at one point, the biggest plane in the skies today was actually put into retirement and scavenged for scraps. So why did the Antonov company decide to do this and how did the plane make its comeback? Stay tuned. So in the 1980s, at the height of the Cold War, there was actually another battle going on between the US and the USSR, and that was for the manufacturing of a reusable spacecraft. So of course, NASA at the time was working on their space shuttle program, and similarly, the Soviet space program was working on their Buran space shuttle. So with these new space programs also came a new demand for a larger than ever aircraft uh, that would be able to handle the extreme payloads and extreme sizes of these new rocket components. For example, used in the transport of rocket boosters or the space shuttles themselves. So in the US, the Boeing 747 was created as a result of this demand. And in the Soviet Union, the Antonov AN-225 was developed for this goal. Now engineers of the USSR specifically wanted this airplane in order to transport the Energia super rockets from its factory to its launch site in Kazakhstan and hoped that eventually this plane would actually serve as an aerial launching platform for rockets in the future. So in 1985, work was underway for development of the AN-225. At the time, a Ukrainian company called Antonov Design Bureau was a leading aerospace manufacturer that specialized in cargo airplanes. So they actually had a very successful airplane called the Antonov AN-124 that engineers decided to base the designs of the 225 on. So the fuselage of the 124 was extended for 40 feet or 12 meters uh, and two additional engines were added to the pre-existing four and those engines were called the Progress D18T turbofan engine. The landing gear of the 124 was also modified to contain 32 wheels on the 225. And for most airplanes, only the nose gear is steerable. However, for the 225, it actually contained 20 steerable wheels with four in the nose gear and 16 in the rear of the main gear. Now this of course made it extremely maneuverable on the ground, meaning it only required a runway width of 60 meters in order for it to turn. Now of course, this still isn't as good as the 45 meters required by the Boeing 747 or the Airbus A380. However, for an aircraft of its size, it's already extremely maneuverable. Engineers decided to alter the design of the tail section of the aircraft called the empennage to a twin tail design. And this was because of the extremely large payload that would be sitting on top of the aircraft that would actually interfere with the airflow around a traditional tail. And hence that impact was reduced by using a twin tail design. In addition to that, the wing design was also altered in order to compensate for the additional weights as well as the additional two engines. So the wings were lengthened as well as their shape was changed to be anhedral. Commonly, aircrafts have a positive dihedral angle, which is the upwards angle of the wings above the wing horizon. So aircrafts with a negative dihedral angle have wings pointing downwards, also called anhedral wings. Now usually, engineers like to increase the dihedral angle of the wing because it makes the aircraft more stable. So for example, when you bank an airplane, its dihedral wings will actually bring it back to wing level flight to a certain extent, but flat wings won't. This is because when you change the plane's angle by banking the aircraft, the relative wind is no longer approaching from directly head on. 
and instead there is an inward component of the wind on the wing that is lowered. Now because the wing is pointed upwards, a portion of the relative wing will meet the underside of the lower wing and brings it back to level flights. Now for the 225, however, the engineers are actually aiming for the opposite effect. So since the wings of the 225 are mounted above its center of gravity, the aircraft is already highly stable due to the pendulum effect. So when the aircraft is too stable, it becomes difficult to maneuver. So instead, stability is reduced using anhedral wings. So this is the reason why the Antonov 225, along with many other fighter jets, are designed with anhedral wings. The 225 took its maiden flight on December of 1988 for a 74-minute flight around Kiev, and soon afterwards it started fulfilling its mission for the Soviet military as well as their space program. And around this time, production for a second 225 was also started. However, in 1991, the president of the USSR, Mikhail Gorbachev, resigned and the USSR was abolished to be replaced by the Russian Federation. And soon afterwards, the original Buran space shuttle program was also canceled, leaving the 225 out of a job. Hence, the 225 was put into storage along with its other half-produced plane, and its engines were actually taken off to be used with the Antonov AN-124. However, around 2000s, it became clear once again that there was still a demand, and this time worldwide, for a plane that was still bigger than the 124. And hence, Antonov decided to restore the plane and put it back into service, and this time to be contracted by countries around the world. Now, when we say the 225 is the biggest plane in the world, that actually comes with an asterisk because it depends on what big means. So let's do a quick comparison of the different metrics of the giants of the world and see if the 225 really does come out on top. Our contestants are, of course, the Antonov 225, coming in at 315 tons, Airbus Beluga XL at 149 tons, the Boeing Dreamlifter at 200 tons, and the Hughes H4 Hercules at 150 tons. For heights, the H4 Hercules comes out on top as the tallest at 24 meters compared to the 18 meters of the 225. And the H4 Hercules also has the widest wingspan at 98 meters, a full 10 meters wider than the 225. However, the 225 does make its comeback with a payload capacity of 275 tons compared to the only 60 tons for the Hercules. The Airbus Beluga comes out on top for the highest cargo hold volume at 78,000 cubic feet, which is almost 1.7 times larger than the Antonov 225. So how did the planes compare for performance? It's important to note a drawback of the 225, and that is that it requires a crew of six in order to operate, as opposed to a crew of two that most airplanes require. And that is because it needs two pilots, two flight engineers, one navigator, and a radio operator. And that is, of course, to compensate for the fact that it lacks new technology that a lot of other airplanes have. However, it does have one very cool advantage, as it is one of the only airplanes in the world, along with the Antonov AN-124, that is completely self-sufficient, meaning it requires absolutely no equipment from the ground in order to load and unload, meaning that it can even operate at very remote areas. Now, in terms of numbers, the cruising speed of the Antonov 225 at 800 kilometers per hour is a close second behind the 880 kilometers per hour of the Boeing Dreamlifter. The Dreamlifter also kills it at range, being able to fly 7,800 kilometers fully loaded, whereas the Antonov 225 is not even at half of that, at 3,500 kilometers, around the distance from New York to LA. Although, I'll give Antonov 225 an honorable mention here, as with maximum fuel, it can actually fly up to 10,000 miles or from New York to Sydney. Now recently, the Antonov 225 is once again demonstrating its value in the skies during COVID-19, as it delivers countless essential medical supplies to the front lines around the world. 
And at the same time, there has been rumors basically for the past decade of various organizations and countries trying to partner with Antonov to help it finish the production of the second 225. However, even today in 2020, that plane is still unfinished. But in the meantime, the existing 225 is being treated like the queen that she is at airports around the world, with them sending out announcements months in advance and drawing spectators of up to thousands of people to come watch it fly. And it also recently undergone a renovation of $20 million and is expected, thankfully, to still stay in the skies until at least 2033. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. What did you think of the Antonov 225? Uh, of course, leave in the comments down below any aircrafts that you want me to cover in upcoming episodes. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And of course, I'll see you next time.